Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans and you're watching the John Cedars channel from The Bunker and in this video we must talk about a new morning worship video that's been uploaded to JW.org. It's entitled William Malenfant Become One Flock and the reason why I want to show it to you is because I think it's a great example of hidden meaning. In other words, material that seems to be addressing one subject, but which contains other messages inside it, which seem to make up the intended take-home message from the material. You'll see what I mean when we get underway. Without further ado, let's roll the first clip. This is certainly an interesting text for us today, very well known. And we appreciate that Jehovah reveals to us what we need what we need to know in order to be happy, and what we need in order to serve him faithfully. But there are some things that Jehovah God has not revealed to us, things that we may be curious about, things that we really don't know. Now, on the face of it, this seems like perfectly reasonable, logical advice. It's one thing to be curious but let's face it, there are some things we simply don't know or cannot know. I wish this could be <laughs> a stronger message in religion in general, but specifically in Jehovah's Witnesses. In other words, I wish this organization could be more forthcoming about things it simply doesn't know about and could recognize that in some areas what they're writing in their publications is pure speculation or things that they would like to be true but aren't necessarily true. So we start this morning worship assuming or hoping that this will be the tone of this sermon, of this talk. That's not quite how it turns out. But our curiosity may persist even though it's something we are not able to know or fully understand. For example, our text comment tells us that we don't need to know the names of all of the anointed on earth today. And the last sentence in the text comment tells us that it would be pointless to try and ascertain who among God's servants will eventually be part of the 144,000. The final judgment and sealing of the anointed is a very private matter between Jehovah and individual anointed ones. However, some of us may be a bit like Peter, curious about others and what God's will is for them. But frankly speaking, brothers and sisters, our curiosity does have to be controlled. We need to recognize our limitations, and there are things that really don't pertain to us. Isn't this interesting? This is what I'm talking about when I talk about hidden meaning, about true messages that are interwoven in a theme that seems to be about something else. So ostensibly his talk is about the anointed, about two flocks, the other sheep with the earthly hope, working together with the little flock or the 144,000 anointed ones who go to heaven, we're supposed to believe that this talk is all about that. But really what it's about is, number one, reminding witnesses to control their curiosity, to not ask questions concerning things that the organisation deems off-limits. And also, as we're going to see... Another underlying message here is that witnesses are just to accept that all of the men on the governing body are of the anointed. That's one thing where there can be no room for doubt, as we're about to see. Knowing the names of brothers and sisters in our congregation of his is of interest to us. Frankly, I'm finding it a little bit difficult at times to remember names in a new congregation when I have to call on brothers. But uh, little by little, we learn. And usually, we of the other sheep know 
who partakes of the emblems, because after all, in our congregation, we see the, the emblems being passed and we can see individuals partaking, uh, in a sense, telling us that yes, they have the heavenly calling. Uh, we see it at the memorial. And I might also add at this point, even though we don't know about that personal relationship that comes about, we don't experience it ourselves, but we are convinced, for example, that the members of the governing body have the heavenly calling. After all, Jehovah has blessed them. They fulfill Bible prophecy about the faithful and discreet slave. There are certain things that we acquire knowledge about and we're convinced of. We see Jehovah's favor on them. We have no doubt that Jehovah's blessing is upon their efforts to take care of the domestics and provide spiritual food for all of us. But there's something we don't know. We have nothing to do with the final sealing. That is a personal thing that takes place between the individual and Jehovah God. And as the comments on the text state, it takes place sometime before the anointed one dies faithful or before the outbreak of the great tribulation. That's what we're told, and that's what we understand. And that's what's indicated in Revelation, where it speaks of the final sealing of the anointed. And as our scripture text today says, the anointed and the other sheep make up one flock under one shepherd. We work together to do Jehovah's will, to honor his name. And we're not seeking to make a name for ourselves uh, among men, among people. So we don't need to know the names of every member of the anointed and follow each one of them. That's not what we do. Jesus is our leader. And the Bible tells us we must follow only him. Matthew 23, 10. And there is a principle to keep in mind that's found at 2 Timothy 2.19. It applies to all the anointed and the other sheep. It's a beautiful principle. Jehovah knows those who belong to him. So isn't that interesting? So much really to unpack there. Apparently, the only thing that Jehovah's Witnesses can know when it comes to the anointed is who partakes, so they're allowed to observe when it's the memorial, who is eating the bread and drinking the wine to signify that they are part of this very select group of 144,000 who go to rule in heaven with Jesus. Incidentally, if you are watching this as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, do more research on this because what you'll find is that Jehovah's Witnesses have invented this two-tier version of Christianity where either you inherit a paradise earth after Armageddon or you go to heaven to rule with Jesus. What's interesting is the Bible doesn't really describe the hope of living on a paradise earth for Christians. Whenever the Bible is describing what happens to Christians, it's always talking, always talking in terms of them going to heaven to be with Jesus. So this is something that's fairly exclusive to Jehovah's Witnesses and not necessarily biblical. But witnesses are allowed to know who partakes, but just because someone is a partaker doesn't necessarily mean that they are of the anointed. This is described as being a private matter. And as I've mentioned in a recent video, one watchtower went as far as to say that people could partake of the emblems because they have some kind of mental or emotional imbalance, which is apparently something that can be said of all other partakers of the emblems, but not the governing body. The governing body are the only ones whose anointed ship... <laughs> I'm inventing words at this point to try and keep up with all of this. Whose status as anointed ones is not to be questioned. And that's what William Malenfant makes unmistakably clear. Witnesses are to be convinced, apparently. 
Remember how he started off at the beginning? He started off with this very reasoned, calm, moderate tone of saying, look, there's some things that we just can't know. But wouldn't you know, <laughs> one of the things that we can know, one of the things that we can be convinced about, one of the things that we can have no doubts concerning is the fact that Samuel Hurd, Anthony Morris, David Splain, Stephen Lett, Jeffrey Jackson, Mark Sanderson, Kenneth Cook, who am I missing out? Ah, Garrett Loesch. All of those men are absolutely of the anointed. We're not allowed to have any doubts about that because it's just obvious because of the fantastic job they're doing at the apex of the organisation. Witnesses are being told what they're allowed to be curious concerning and what they're allowed to be sure of. Isn't that fascinating? So I just found that really interesting. It seems to me to be a further attempt at marginalising the anointed and making sure it's crystal clear in the minds of Jehovah's Witnesses who they are to follow. Yes, William Malenfant is repeatedly saying here, oh, we follow Jesus, but he's also saying we don't follow the anointed. And that's interesting because if you were a Jehovah's Witness in a congregation with someone who partakes of the emblems, you could be tempted to think, well, they've been chosen by Jesus, just as the men on the governing body have been chosen by Jesus. Maybe I should listen to what they have to say about the Bible. And William Malenfant is here saying, no, 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 that's not how it works. The only people who have that kind of power in the organisation and whose power cannot be questioned is the governing body. So I found that really interesting. Hopefully you found my thoughts on it interesting. Don't forget to subscribe to the John Cedars channel for more such videos. And as always, thank you for watching.